Hi everyone, my name is Afaf and I am one of the expert tutors for the Audit and Assurance stream of papers for ACCA. We are going to be looking at laws and regulations in this video. Audit implications of suspected breach of a law or regulation is a very frequently tested topic in the AAA exam and the best part is it is one of those rare topics which is very easy to understand and even easier to get marks in. Now, um, as far as the exam preparation is concerned, we're going to cover pretty much everything related to this topic. The aim is that by the end of this video, you would be ready to tackle all related questions in the exam. We'll review the learning outcomes from the syllabus guide and how they are commonly tested. We will look at the common reasons for not being able to get the available marks in the exam, but I wouldn't want you to worry too much about that. The entire purpose of this video is to revise the key concepts and understand the answering techniques which automatically incorporate your technical as well as professional skills marks. We know that in advanced audit and assurance, practice is the key to passing. We will therefore wrap this all up by applying the knowledge that we have learned and the answering techniques to a question extracted from the past exams. Now the learning outcomes pretty much reflect the sequence in which you will evaluate the audit implications of identified or suspected non-compliance at a client. So you've either picked it up and there's no ambiguity regarding this or you as an auditor suspect that a breach might have taken place. You should therefore be comfortable with the responsibilities of the management as well as the auditors. You are expected to be able to plan your audit procedures when a breach is discovered and discuss who this may need to be reported to. And finally, you should recognize when withdrawal from an audit engagement may be needed when non-compliance is identified at a client. So these are the learning outcomes that we are going to focus on in the entire video. Now details of whatever you learn in this video can be read from chapter 4 of ACCA Study Hub. Combined with practice questions on their practice platform, there's not much else you need to do to prepare for this topic. So chapter 4 is what you need to revise after you've finished watching this video. So um, let me just put this all up together and then we'll discuss this. Okay, so like I said earlier, non-compliance with laws and regulations is a very easy topic to study and understand. However, and there's always this big however, it might not always be clearly or explicitly mentioned that a breach has taken place. You might be expected to infer from the scenario that this indicates a non-compliance. So, for example, if the question indicates that there are unusual payments in cash or unusual transactions with companies in tax havens or maybe even adverse media comments about a client, say in terms of their negative impact on the environment, you as a AAA student should be able to identify that this is a possible non-compliance and answer accordingly. If you can't identify the breach in the question or discuss the audit work that needs to be planned regarding this, you would not be able to get the available marks. All of this will be covered when we outline the key concepts and talk about the answering techniques in just a few minutes from now. Having said all of this, if you look at the second part of the screen, which is one of the commonly tested exam requirements, sometimes the examining team will actually clearly ask you to discuss the firm's responsibilities in relation to a client's compliance with laws and regulations and recommend the actions which should be taken once a breach has been identified. So there are two types of questions, either the examining team will explicitly ask you to discuss the responsibilities and next steps or you might be just asked to decide what the next steps are without there being any indication that a breach is what is expected from the requirement. All right then, 
Let's start with an overview of ISA 250 that deals with the auditor's responsibility to consider laws and regulations in an audit of financial statements. It is very important that you make a note of each concept that I'm going to revise as this will ultimately become your answering technique as well. Now to start off with, and like I said, we'll talk about the answering technique later, we're just revising the key concepts. To, so to start off with, management is responsible for making sure that the operations are carried out in accordance with laws and regulations. This basically means that in order to prevent and detect non-compliance, it is the management that needs to ensure that they have proper controls in place to monitor and comply with all legal requirements. Management may also develop and follow a code of conduct and they could also actually discipline employees who fail to comply with the code and other regulations. It is the management who has to ensure that any breaches that they become aware of are reported to relevant external authorities on a timely basis. So prevention, detection, reporting, all is basically the management's responsibility. It's important to understand that we as external auditors cannot prevent non-compliance and we cannot be expected to detect compliance, non-compliance with all types of laws and regulations. We as auditors need to gain an understanding of the legal and regulatory framework or environment in which the client operates. In very simple terms, this basically means that auditors need to know which laws and regulations apply to their client. This will help them identify instances of breaches and assess their implications. So as auditors, we need to perform procedures to identify non-compliance that could have a material effect on the financial statements or sometimes where any non-compliance could actually affect my ability to continue as a going concern. You should remember from audit and assurance that the effect on the financial statements of non-compliance or laws regulations could be direct or indirect. Just to quickly recap, some laws and regulations clearly have a direct effect on the financial statements. These are the ones that determine the form or content or the amounts that are recorded in the financial statements. So for example, your tax laws or companies act. So you would put the tax law in front of you, which would determine the amount that goes in your PNL as tax expense for the year. So it's a direct effect. There are, however, other laws and regulations which may not have a direct effect but must be complied with so that the business can continue. So, for example, um, if your client is a bank then or any other financial institution, then those are the indirect laws that they have to ultimately comply with so that they can continue running as a bank. As auditors, when you become aware of a breach, you need to understand how it occurred. You need to know if there were any employees responsible for this breach, whether this was deliberate on purpose or was it unintentional. And ultimately, they need to perform procedures to evaluate the possible effects on the financial statements. And finally, and super important, auditors have to determine whether they have the responsibility to report the identified non-compliance or a breach to external parties. We are going to look at each of these responsibilities in a bit more detail because it is literally this slide that you see on the screen right now that needs to be applied to the exam scenarios. So let's break this down. We'll start off with a very quick overview of the procedures that can help auditors identify whether a breach has taken place, which may have a material effect on the financial statements. So what can we do? We can inquire of the management or those charged with governance 
as to whether the company is in compliance with all applicable laws and regulations remember inquiry is verbal evidence so it is weak evidence it should always be supported with a written representation from the management which could state that all breaches have been disclosed to the auditors and their effects recorded in the financial statements we can also inspect any correspondence or communication with any relevant licensing or regulatory authorities if a breach has taken place it is likely that it would have been discussed in a board or extraordinary general meeting so minute of these minutes of these meetings can be reviewed confirmation letters can be sent to the client's legal advisor to see if a non compliance has occurred and if yes what the impacts on the financial statements could be so what you see on the screen right now are procedures that i am carrying out to identify and see if a breach has taken place so right now i'm not aware of anything i'm just putting in my own extra effort to find out if something has happened now this is where the main scenario based focus of aaa starts let's take breach of data protection regulation as an example as a part of my responsibility as an external auditor i have to ensure that i have full knowledge and understanding of the data protection regulation so that i can evaluate the implication of non compliance on the business and on the financial statements procedures must be performed to get evidence this could include discussions with the management to find out how the data breach had occurred the audit team needs to perform further procedures for example they could actually be carrying out discussions with legal advisors as well we then have to get further information to evaluate the possible effect on the financial statements this could have financial consequences which might mean the company might shut down this could also mean double entries in terms of your provisions or impairment of asset or a contingent liability disclosure further audit procedures will need to be conducted to understand the legal and operational consequences of the breach like i said this could include fines and exposure to litigation and we need to then evaluate the materiality of such exposure the probability of being fined and the estimated amount can be determined by inspecting correspondence between the lawyer and the client by sending the lawyer a confirmation letter or by inspecting minutes of board meetings remember in terms of the fine that i might have to now pay as the client the auditor is concerned about a provision and an expense that might be understated or a contingent liability disclosure which could be inadequate or missing and in extreme circumstances if you feel as an auditor that the company might not be able to continue because of this non compliance then we could be looking at disclosures related to going concern uncertainty as well now this is where the interesting part starts if the auditor's evaluation is that the non compliance was intentional or the management has knowingly not reported a breach to the relevant external authorities so they know a breach has happened but they're just staying quiet about it auditors need to increase their professional skepticism not only would this affect the audit risk assessment because the risk is higher the auditor should now also query the reliability of any management representations regarding the compliance with laws and regulations because you're now concerned that they may there may might be other breaches that the auditors have not identified and very important management integrity is now a huge concern as well as this scenario linked evaluation is highly likely to get you professional skills marks and the technical marks it's important that you understand 
not only the technical content, but also how this needs to be applied to the scenario. So in the previous slide, we spoke about how we need to evaluate the impact on the financial statements. We need to see which law has been breached. We took an example of Data Protection Act. We looked at um, correspondence between the lawyer and the client to evaluate the chances of a fine, etc. And in addition to that particular non-compliance that has been identified, I'm now changing the way I'm looking at other instances of breaches and non-compliance. I think the client is more risky. I'm concerned about their um, systems being not uh, systems not being strong enough. I'm concerned about any other written representations they've given me. And I'm getting professional skills marks by saying that I have concerns about the management being dishonest. Let's pause here for a minute and see what we've discussed. We started off with the discussion on management's and auditor's responsibilities. We went on to discuss the audit work on suspected non-compliance and its impact on our risk assessment. We now need to wrap this all up by talking about reporting and communication that needs to take place regarding the breach. A common misconception of AAA students is that I'm going to report to the um, shareholders in my audit report and that's it. It's important to remember that in addition to reporting non-compliance to the management and those charged with governance, the audit report could be affected depending on whether the impact on the financial statements has been correctly recorded or not. And additionally, we have to determine as auditors if we have a responsibility to report the non-compliance to outside parties, so to regulatory authorities outside the client. If the management or those charged with governance do not make the necessary disclosure themselves, we have to consider as auditors whether we should make the disclosure. And this discussion gets you technical and professional skills marks. Remember, our reporting will depend on matters such as whether there is a legal duty to disclose or whether it is considered to be in the public's interest to do so. Confidentiality is an issue as usually auditors cannot disclose information obtained during the audit to external parties without getting permission from the client. However, this may be overwritten, overridden. This is mentioned in the Code of Ethics, right? So the duty or the fundamental principle of confidentiality may be overridden in some cases by legislation or court order. And in certain cases, disclosure may, might be in public's interest. So legal advice would be very helpful here. We need to uh, maybe contact a lawyer to determine whether confidentiality can or should be breached and a report made to external um, regulators. The decision to disclose will always be a matter of auditor's judgment. And if this disclosure is in good faith, it is considered um, okay. So it is not really considered a breach of duty of confidentiality. In certain circumstances, the auditor can also consider withdrawing from the engagement if it is permitted by local law or regulation. This could be, for example, when management or those charged with governance do not take the remedial action that the auditor considers appropriate in terms of the identified or suspected non-compliance. And the auditors might be very concerned about the integrity of the management or those charged with governance. So once you look at an example of a breach, it could be health and safety, it could be data protection, like we said, after the entire discussion, you get lots of technical and professional skills marks for discussing the reporting responsibilities. We're now going to have a quick look at the answering technique for the AAA questions, which will be very familiar and very repetitive 
as this is exactly what I've been doing since we started the video. So for the past 17, 18 minutes, I've been saying this over and over again, and I'm now going to put this all together as an answering technique. So in the exam, once you've identified that this question relates to auditor's work regarding non-compliance, this is the checklist you need to use to type up your answer. You will start off with outlining the management's and the auditor's responsibilities, making sure that you refer to the scenario. Explain the law that has been breached. Which law is it? See if there's any indication that the management was involved in this or they are aware of this and have knowingly not reported it. Discuss the impact on the financial statements. This could be a fine which may require a provision or a contingent liability disclosure. It could be assets which may need to be impaired or even a going concern uncertainty disclosure in some cases. You then need to explain the procedures which now need to be planned to determine the amount, materiality and the probability and outline a few of those procedures. If you've read through the scenario and you can tell that the breach is intentional or the management has decided to stay quiet about it instead of reporting it, explain that this raises concerns about the management's integrity and we now need to revise our risk assessment. Please remember that even if the requirement does not ask you to discuss actions to be taken, you need to outline your re reporting responsibilities automatically. So this includes a consideration of everything we spoke about, um, reporting to those charged with governance, audit report, um, and then the external authorities, uh, and particularly a discussion around how this may be an exception to confidentiality, etc. So everything that we discussed, which was pretty much ISA 250, becomes your answering technique. We will learn, we will now learn how to apply all of these to a AAA question. Remember, application of knowledge is the key to passing advanced audit and assurance. So ultimately, without an example, whatever we know or whatever we've wrote learned is pretty useless. I want you to pause the video and read through the scenario on the screen. The email that is being referred to is on the next screen. We'll get to that in just a minute or so. We know that the client is Margoco that produces food-based food products. You have been sent an email which the audit engagement partner has from a production manager working at one of the company's olive farms. You need to discuss the audit implications of the email and recommend any further actions to be taken by the firm for H marks. Now, before we see what the email says, please note that the requirement does not indicate what this task may relate to. So the topic is not specified. It is very easy right now, obviously, because we know that the topic is going to be related to non-compliance, but in the exam, you'll need to remember that questions in AAA will not always flag up what you need to consider. So you would have had to read the email and pick up that this relates to non-compliance all on your own. So if you could please once again pause the video, read the email carefully, go back to the requirement and then watch the question debrief only after you've outlined the answer in writing so that you can evaluate your ability to apply our learning to the scenario. So the summary is that farmers have been instructed to use chemicals which are banned because they are toxic for humans. A production manager has raised this concern with a director, so a senior management person, who gave him $10,000 to stay quiet and that's pretty much it. Having read this email, you should identify that some law seems to have been breached. They have used words like prohibited and banned to help you identify that 
there is some element of non-compliance. There is also an indication of compromised management integrity due to the bribe that has been offered. Make sure you put that in your answer. All we now need to do is discuss the audit implication of this non-compliance using the answering techniques that we have learned in this video. We now know the answer format, so I'm not going to read through this. This is the sequence in which your discussion can take place to have a logical flow for the evaluation. Please make sure that you are comfortable with this before you review the answer with me. So your answering format, sequence, flow, whatever you call it, will make it easier for you to get your technical and professional skills marks. I'm now going to debrief the um, main points to tell you how you can get all the marks. Now, the use of prohibited chemicals raises concerns that the company is breaching laws or regulations. We start off by saying that it is the management's responsibility to make sure that the entity's operations are carried on in accordance with the provisions of law. The auditor has to gain an understanding of the legal and regulatory environment so that they can identify non-compliance and assess the implications of those non-compliance. The green part is the one that you're linking to the scenario. So the auditor should basically now ensure that they have full knowledge and understanding of the laws and regulations relevant to the use of chemicals in the company's firm, farms so that they can evaluate the implication of this breach. So the black part is what our learning was. The green part is basically me applying that learning to the scenario. I've identified the use of prohibited chemicals as the potential breach. I've identified that this is an area that I need to gain an understanding of in detail as an external auditor. Now we know that when a breach is identified or suspected, the auditor has to obtain an understanding of the nature of the act, the circumstances in which it has occurred, and again carry out procedures to get information about the effect on the financial statements. So that was my learning. Now, procedures that I now need to perform to get evidence about this breach could include speaking to the company's farm managers to understand whether the allegations are in fact correct. We could also review purchase invoices to see if these chemicals are actually being purchased and used in the business and if yes, who has been approving it. Remember, the auditor needs to consider the potential implications for the financial statements. The non-compliance could lead to regulatory authorities imposing fines or penalties which may need to be provided for in the financial statements, right? So we need to make sure as auditors that we perform procedures to find out the amount, the materiality, and the probability of any fine. That was my knowledge. For this question, this includes fines or penalties on Margoko related to this non-compliance. And very important, in addition to the breaches, there is another impact on the financial statements. We now have fruit or uh, inventory of harvested fruit that we have there in stock. They have been contaminated with poisonous chemicals and we will potentially now need to destroy it. So this stock or inventory needs to now be written down to its naturalizable value, which could potentially be a zero. So in addition to IS-37, which we are comfortable with because, you know, a fine is likely to lead to that, it is the valuation of inventory with those um, banned chemicals sprayed that now needs to be considered in its valuation as well. In case you've picked this up, there may be a going concern issue once the non-compliance and its implications have been established and the fact gets out into the media, there could be considerable impact on the reputation of Margot and its brand. 
Customers could actually stop buying their products because they're concerned about their health. And ultimately, this could have an impact on the going concern. So in terms of financial statements, I've now evaluated for this client three areas. IS 37 for the fines, IS 2 for my inventory valuation, and then potentially going concern disclosures because of the um, massive impact this could have on the client's reputation. There is also an ethical issue in that, that one of the production managers may have been bribed by the company's directors. This indicates a lack of integrity and this pretty much confirms uh, that the chemicals that are being used are in fact prohibited and this is a non-compliance. This matter needs to be discussed with the management and those charged with governance. There is only one director who's done the bribe. I need to make sure the others are aware of it. The auditor should attempt to find out if there's any member of the management who has actually issued instructions for these chemicals to be used. So again, we're trying to prove that this is a deliberate breach of law or regulation. Remember, if the auditor suspects the management or those charged with governance of being involved, they should be looking for a higher authority or the audit committee. But because this is a family managed business, there is going to be no higher authority. So in this case, you get Professional skills marks were saying that the auditor might need to consider getting legal advice about reporting this non-compliance. We're not done yet. We need to consider reporting this breach to external authorities. Remember, ISA 215 requires the auditor to find out whether they have a responsibility to report this. In the event that the management or those charged with governance do not disclose this themselves, I will need to make that disclosure or I might need to make this disclosure. This will depend on matters including whether there is a legal duty to disclose this or because this is about health, maybe it is in the public's interest for me to do so. Please go on to explain that confidentiality is an issue and if a disclosure were to be made, we should get legal advice because we are breaching or overriding confidentiality. We are going to discuss confidentiality as a fundamental principle for a separate technical mark and the fact that this could be an exception for a separate mark and then with the fact that we can get legal advice for a professional skills mark. So everything that we covered in the learning portion in the answering technique portion has pretty much been copy pasted and applied to a breach which in this example was potentially a health and safety regulatory breach. So please note we answered the question in the same sequence in which we learned about the audit implications of identified non-compliance. Please do ensure that you practice questions in writing under exam conditions, which basically means time managed practice to evaluate your ability to get the technical as well as the professional skills marks.